Welcome back to the JavaScript Essential Training Series. I'm Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, we'll actually be talking about if statements in JavaScript. And actually, it's conditional statements in JavaScript. We'll actually be talking about the if statement, which is a conditional statement. So conditional statements in JavaScript. There are normally several places during the execution of your application that decisions will need to be made to determine in what direction the code flow should take. Normally, developers will use flowcharts to signify this as an application is being designed and developed. We'll actually use flowcharts as we walk through our code structure to make certain that we're not missing any of the branches that we want to develop as we're writing the actual, actual application itself. When designing code flow, charts are a way to structure the code so that you can see how decisions impact the flow of the code. And they kind of look something like this. You actually have your code coming in to some type of decision loop is the user a member? And there'll be two different answers to that, whether it's yes or no. If it's yes, then you have access to this particular area of the website. If it's no, you do not have that access to the area of the website. So certain things will occur based on how that condition is met or not met. And then we'll continue on with the standard flow of the code. In order to determine the path to take, you set a condition. You do this by using what's called conditional statements in JavaScript. For example, in our demonstration, we're checking to see if a user is a member of the application. There are a variety of ways that we can do this, as you'll see in the demonstrations as we go through our lab demonstrations. Once we determine if the user is a member, then we can determine which code group will be executed based on that condition. So again, here we have an example of the structure of an if statement inside JavaScript. So I've actually set the condition, and in this particular case, score is greater than 50. If that's true, then I've got a certain block of code that executes in the event that that's a true statement. If it's not true, or if it executes false, then I got a different group of code that executes based on that statement. And again, I've put in white space for added clarity so you can actually see how it's structured in the code itself. But this is a typical structure of a conditional statement inside JavaScript, and actually inside many programming languages. So JavaScript supports conditional statements which are used to perform different actions based on different conditions. In this tutorial, we'll examine the if statement, the if else statement, and the if else if statement as we work through the exercises. I'm also going to wrap it up by showing you the ternary statement inside of JavaScript. And ternary is used in, again, a bunch of different programming languages, but it's a one-line conditional statement. And we tend to use it quite a bit inside programming. So let's move into our development environment and demonstrate what we talked about in our presentation. All right, so the first thing I want to do, let's go ahead and drop out of our presentation, drop into our development environment. I want to confirm that we have the Apache servers up and running, which it is. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and load up Sublime Text 3, which will be our text editor for the demonstration. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up Google Chrome, which will be the browser I'll be using. I'm actually still in section two of our JavaScript training files. So again, if you're following along, you should be in section two of your files also. And the first thing I want to do is I've got my template.html file up and loaded. I want to go ahead and save this. So I want to do a save as. I'm going to go ahead and save this as if underscore one dot HTML. That's the file that we'll be using for this particular demonstration. And then I want to go ahead and open that file in our browser. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh if underscore one dot HTML. We've got nothing in there perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and give us a title. I'm just going to put in here conditional statements. And I'm going to come down inside of the container. I'm going to go ahead and put an H2 in here. And I'm just going to put an if statement in JavaScript. Just so that we keep track of everything that we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. Go ahead and refresh the browser so that we've got that up there. We know we're in the right file. Excellent. Okay. So conditional statements in JavaScript and most programming languages are a way to have your application make a decision based on a condition of the code. In other words, something that's going on, we've set a variable somewhere in the code, but we want the code to make a decision based on that. So the first example is going to be very simplistic. It's a very simple example. I'm going to go ahead and put in my script tags. So I'm going to open up my script tags inside of my container element in my template. Go ahead and close the script tag out. And inside the script tags, I'm going to have a very, very simple conditional statement. I'm going to put in a variable. So I'm going to declare a variable called age, and I'm going to make it equal to 19. I'm going to end that with a semicolon. And then what I want to do is I'm going to put down an if statement, and inside parentheses, just like we talked about inside of our presentation, 
if age, and I'm going to use one, one of my operators, is greater than 18, and then I'm going to have my opening and closing curly brace, and inside the curly braces, I'm going to put document.write, if I can spell, and then inside my parentheses, I'm going to put down you're old enough to drive. Again, very simple statement. But this time the actual code is going to determine whether or not the statement runs. The big thing to understand with conditional statements is what is inside the parentheses, what we're looking for is does it evaluate to true? If it evaluates to true, then this first group of code executes. If it doesn't evaluate to true, in this particular case, we would just drop out of the code and we come right back down here. I'm just going to put down a document that right so you can follow what we're doing here. And in fact, we'll start this with a PR tag to give us a line feed, just in the event we've run something from inside the code. Back to code flow. Back to the code flow. So now we're back inside the normal code flow is what I'm saying is we've dropped out of the conditional statement. So I'm going to go ahead and save all these changes. The first thing I want you to notice, we've got a variable age and then we've set it to 19. So I'm asking, is the age greater than 18? In this case, that's going to be true. So we should actually execute this and then we should drop back into normal code flow. So let's go ahead and refresh our browser window and you'll say, you'll notice it says you're old enough to drive and then we're back to the code flow. So it told us we're old enough to drive because it's greater than 18. If I were to make this 16, save that change. Now we're not going to evaluate to true. This is going to actually evaluate to false. So the code inside my curly braces will not execute. It's going to just drop right back to normal code flow. So if I go ahead and refresh the browser window, you'll notice now we don't get that first line. It just says back to code flow because again, we did not evaluate to true. So we're not greater than 18. We don't execute this code. We just drop right down and get back into standard code flow. And that's the way conditional statements work, not only in JavaScript, but in almost all programming languages, they work the same way. Again, we're looking for this condition to evaluate to true. And there's a lot of different operators we can use inside those parentheses, as you saw when we did the operators tutorials a few tutorials ago. So, I mean, you can make these things very, very complex. And we're gonna do a couple other examples so you can see they can get much more complex than something as simple as this. All right, so now let's look at a different example. I am going to go ahead, I'm going to do a save as, let's go ahead and save this as if underscore two dot HTML. And again, I'm doing this because I don't want to overwrite these files for you. I want you to be able to have files of all the different stuff we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and remove this code that we just used. Save all those changes, go back into my browser. Let's load up if underscore two dot HTML. We should have nothing there except our heading. So now what I want to do, let's look at a different way to make comparisons in our conditional statements. In this example, we'll make a couple of comparisons in the same statement using some of the operators that we studied about in, pre, in the previous tutorials, because we actually had quite a few different operators. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and declare my variables. And again, I'm going to copy this stuff so you don't have to watch me type it in. I'm just going to come down a couple of lines. And I'm going to declare four variables for this particular demonstration. I have variable A, which is equal to 50, variable B, which is equal to 75, variable C, which is equal to 100, and variable D, which is equal to 100. The difference between C and D is one is a numeric value and the other one is a text value. The one that's in parentheses or in quotation marks is a text value. So the first thing I want to do is let's create a function. So we're actually going to use a conditional statement. This time we're going to use it actually in a function. And actually, instead of typing all this in, because I've got a lot of stuff here, I am going to go ahead and I'm just going to declare this first one. I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to come down here right below my variables and I'm going to paste in this function. And hang on one second. I'll give you a chance to type all this in. And I've got a function called check variables. And then I've got my first condition. Let me go ahead and close that curly brace. Let me clean up my formatting here just a little bit. And then I've got to close the actual curly brace for my if statement. Because I actually have a curly brace that where the functions 
holding the conditional statement than I actually have my curly braces for the conditional statement itself. So I want to make sure all my, all my coding is correct. And again, because this is a function, I've got to be able to trigger this. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an input type of button so we can actually call this particular function. So let me get out of my script tag. I'm going to come right below the script tag and I'm going to put an input type of button with an ID of button input. The value is going to be check variables and then I'm going to have an on click event that calls the actual function, calls my check variables function. So we're, we're doing a lot of different things in this particular demonstration. Not only are we going to work with these conditional statements, we're also working with functions, which we studied in an earlier tutorial. We're working with a group of variables, and I'm also showing you how to call a function using the input type button inside of HTML. So we're doing a whole bunch of different concepts here. So I want you to stay with me. So the first thing I've got, I've got inside my function. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, go ahead. This would be a great time to pause and type all this in so you can catch up with me because we're going to do a bunch of demonstrations in this particular exercise. Okay, so you should have everything typed in. You should be caught up. So inside my script tags, I've got this function called check variables and now I've generated this button that's actually going to let me allow this. And if you look at the condition, I've got if A is less than B. And if you look at our variables, you'll see that A is less than B. So it actually should go in and run this document.write and execute the variable A is less than the variable D or B. Let's go ahead and save all these changes. Let's go make sure we're actually loading if underscore two dot HTML. Now I've got my button. When I select the button, it says the variable A is less than the variable B. So that's perfect. So we know that it worked because A is less than variable B. If I were to make this 75, I'm just going to go ahead and change the variable A to 75, save the change, refresh my browser window. Now, is A less than variable B? Nope. It's not greater than either. It's the same. But if I hit my check variables, nothing's going to happen. And again, because we've dropped out of the code, A is not less than variable B. If I said less than or equal to, so if I put a less than and then an equal sign, I save that change. This time it would execute because it is actually equal to variable B. So let's go ahead and make that 50 again. So you're seeing how all this is working. I'm going to add another condition to this particular statement. I'm going to come down right below that first if, and I'm going to put an else statement in there. So I'm going to say else, and then open and close my curly braces. And what I want to do now, I'm going to say this is what's going to occur if that's not true. The first condition was not true. So I'm saying, okay, now if A is not less than or equal to B, the first can, I'm going to go ahead and take out the equal, by the way. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. So now I'm saying that this does not evaluate to true, then I'm going to execute the else. So let's make certain it doesn't execute to true. I'm going to change this is A greater than B, which we know it's not. So it's not going to evaluate to true. I'm going to refresh my browser, check my variable. The first condition was not true. And again, it's not true because A is not greater than B. So that's pretty cool. You see now how the else statement works. Now I can also have another condition in there and I'm going to put that one in right now. I'm going to come down right below. And again, I'm still inside my function. And I'm going to paste in another condition is a greater than C. So now I'm saying is a 50 greater than C 100. We know that's not true. So it's going to come down and evaluate that if statement. Once it finishes the first one, it's going to come back now to the second. It's going to evaluate that and say, no, nope, that's not true either. So we're going to save all those changes. Refresh the browser window, check the variables. The first condition was not true. The second condition was not true. And that's true because they were not true. A is not greater than B and A is not greater than C. If I were to make this, A is less than B. Save the change. Refresh the browser window. Now the first condition was met, but the second condition was not. So you can see how these can, using our comparison operators, how we can actually build upon these statements.
All right, that's a great time to pause if you need to type that. Let me go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. Great time to pause if you want to type that in. I am going to go ahead and do another demonstration. And again, we're using those operators. Again, I'm going to copy this so you don't have to watch me type it. I'm going to come down below our second conditional and I'm going to put in another conditional statement. This one's going to be a little bit more complex because now we're actually not only are we using some operators, but I'm also using an and. So I'm saying is C, if C is greater than A and A is greater than B, then I'm going to write a couple of different lines or else I'm going to say the third one's not true. So let's look at C. Is C greater than A? Yes, it is. Is A greater than B? No, it's not. So I should, again, the third condition was not true. Let's go ahead and save those changes. Let me go ahead and scroll up just a little bit. Great time for you to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the window. And you're going to see now the third condition was not true. But if I change the value of A, let's go ahead and change the value of A so we can actually make it true. So C is larger than A, which it is right now. And A is larger than B. I'm just going to go ahead and make this 80. So it is larger than B. I'm going to go ahead and save that change. So now we should actually see these two lines appear. The variable C is greater than the variable A and the variable A is greater than the variable B. So we save all the changes, refresh our browser, check the variables once again, and it says variable C is greater than variable A and variable A is greater than variable B. The reason, by the way, we're getting all these spaces is because of the formatting half for the block level elements, the H3s, because you'll notice I'm actually making these, I'm sorry, H4s. I'm making these H4 so we actually get some separation and they're treated as block level elements. That's why you're seeing these so far apart. I wanted to do that for space for, for clarity for you to see what we're doing. So let's look at another example. Again, I'm trying not only to get you used to using the conditional statements, but also getting you used to using some of the operators that we studied about in an earlier tutorial. Let's look at this one. So I'm going to come down right below the last conditional statement we did. And this one, I'm doing this one on purpose because it's actually going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. So I've got is C equal to D. And I've got C is equal to 100 and D is equal to 100. So in this condition, I'm actually checking to say is C equal to D. Remember the double equal sign, single equal signs is an operator, double equal signs is comparison. We talked about that in an earlier tutorial. So this should come back. The variable C is equal to the variable D. So if I save all the changes, great time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. Refresh my browser window. Check those variables. It does tell me the variable C is equal to the variable D. But we can throw a curveball in this one. And I'm going to do that with the very next example. I'm going to come down right below that and put in another example because now I'm saying is C identical to D. And if you remember from our earlier tutorial, let's go ahead and stretch this out just a bit. Somehow I think I've got an extra space in there. I shouldn't have that there. Shouldn't have that curly brace there. But if you remember from an earlier tutorial, we talked about the double equal sign being a comparison and the triple equal sign being identical. That means not only are they the same value, but they're the same data type. And if you look, at C and D, they do have the same value. They're both 100, but they're not the same data type. D is actually a text data type. That's why it's in quotation marks. And C is actually a numeric data type. And that's why it is not in quotation marks. And it's also why it's red on your screen. So if I save all those changes, great time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. Refresh our browser window. That one is going to evaluate not to be true. The fifth condition was not true. And again, it's not true because they're not identical. The reason they're not identical is because C is a numeric and D is a text value. And it's again, something we've got to remember as we're working through our data types and working through our conditions. Remember, we're looking for a true evaluation inside our comparison. And if we wanted to know for certain whether the data types are the same and the values are the same, we'd have to use the identical operator, which is the triple equal sign, not the double equal sign. All right, well, so we've done a whole bunch of examples of if else statements. Let's do a real quick else if. I'm going to go ahead and do save as. And again, I want to save this so you have copies of this. I'm going to do if underscore three dot HTML. I'm going to go ahead and load up that file inside my browser. Now I want to pull out a bunch of these this code. 
I am going to take everything out except our first conditional statement. So I've got this if A is greater than B, and then I have else. But I want to say if A is greater than B, then I want to say here is else if, I'm going to actually add a di another condition, else if, let's say B is less than, is less than C. Now we're going to have a condition here, so we're just going to say B, variable B is less than C. And then we're actually going to add one more. I'm going to say else if, and again, inside my parentheses, D is equal to C. And again, I'm just going to put in my curly braces. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Put this. So variable D and C are equal. So what it's going to do here is actually going to the first one it runs into that's true. So it's going to is A greater than B. I'm going to actually make this so it's false. So I'm going to say 50 up here. So A is not greater than B. Is B less than C? That is true. But I'm going to make this one 10. I want this one to be false. So B is not less than C. And then I'm going to come down here, else if D is equal to C, and that we know is going to be true because they are actually equal. Even though they're not identical, they are equal. So this one, as we run it this time, let's go ahead and save the change. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually checking three different conditions. That's why I'm using the else if, and I can put another condition in there based on what I'm trying to check for, what branch I want to run. So based on what we set up here, we should get variable D and C are equal when we actually execute this code. Let's go ahead and save all our changes. Great time for you to pause if you want to type this in. I'm going to go back and I'm going to load that if underscore 3.html. Let's go ahead and check the variables and it says the variable A is less than the variable B. Uh, hang on one second. That is very true. Let's go ahead and raise this A because I didn't want that to be less than the variable B. I actually want to get to, I'm going to make this 200. I actually want that to get to the third check. So let's go ahead and save it, refresh the browser, run it again. Now it says variable D and C are equal. So it got all the way down to the third condition and then it found an equal. And we could also have another else here if we wanted to. We could also stack some more else ifs, but I'm going to show you a better way of doing a lot of if or nested else if statements. There's actually a better way to do that than actually continually put these in here. But you can see that we can actually nest else ifs inside of our if statement to have multiple conditions checked inside of our conditional statement. And then we could actually end it with an else statement, else, and again down here, I'm just going to put document.write, no conditions met. So I'm just going to copy that and just put down no conditions met. And that will set it up so nothing is met. So that you can see that we don't have to have. So now I've got my if, my else if, my else if, my else. So I've got A is less than B, that's false. B is less than C, that's false. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a thousand and one so they don't equal. I'm going to save those changes. Refresh my browser. Now when I check it, nothing should be matched. So it says no conditions were met. And again, that's because we didn't meet any of the conditions inside our conditional statement. So there's one more thing I want to look at with conditional statements before we move on, and that's the ternary statement inside of JavaScript. Kind of cool. So that'll be the next one we're going to look at. So let's look at a ternary operator inside of JavaScript. And what a ternary operator is, it's basically a conditional statement that's executed on one single line. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to do save as. Let's save this as if underscore four dot HTML. So you have a copy of all this in your exercise files. If you've purchased the tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the coding inside of our script tags. I'm going to go ahead and do a save. Let's go in and load up underscore four. Right now we've got nothing except our button, which is good. Actually, we don't even, well, maybe we will leave the button for now. So what I want to do, 
The conditional ternary operator is the only JavaScript operator that takes three operands. And you're going to see in a minute what I mean by that. We actually have three different things we have. We condition, expression one, and expression two. So if the condition is true, the operator returns the value of expression one. Otherwise, it returns the value of expression two. For example, to display a different message based on the value of the member variable, we'd use a statement where we looked at a condition, and then if that statement's evaluated to true, it returns the first expression. If it's not evaluated to true, it returns the second expression. Let me show you what I mean by that. And what I'm gonna do first, let's go ahead and start with a date. I think that's an easy one to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this so you don't have to watch me type it. And inside my script tags, and I will talk you through this step by step. So I've done, I've created a variable called now and it's equal to a new date. We know that the date's a function inside JavaScript. Then I've created a variable greeting and it says greeting is equal to good plus it's looking at the now, which is that variable we just created, dot get hours. So we're pulling the hours out of the now variable. And I'm saying if it's greater than 17, then it's evening. If it's less, well, if it's not evening, then it's gotta be day. So in other words, if it's less than 17, it's not gonna be evening, so it's gonna be day. So this greeting is gonna say good day or good evening, dependent upon what time of day it is that you're actually running this script. So for me, it should say good day because I'm running it during the daytime. So when I save all these changes, great time for you to pause. And we're just gonna actually print this greeting to the screen. Great time to pause if you need to type this in. I wanna go make sure that we're actually loaded with the if underscore four. And you'll notice it says, good day. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this button out. I do not need this button there. <clears throat> go ahead and save the change. So when I refresh the browser window, it's telling me good day. And again, it's good day because it's actually about 11 o'clock in the morning when I'm recording this. So it's gonna be a good day. Let's go ahead and put a line break and I'll give you one other example. And this is one I actually use on the site, on my actual website where you're actually watching these videos. I'm going to go ahead and save this ver or save this change. I'm just putting a line break. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to check membership using a ternary expression. So I'm going to come down right below the line break and I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to create a variable that's called is member. And I've got it currently set to true. Then I'm saying variable member equal your pricing is. And then I'm going to look at the value of the is member variable. If it's true, the pricing is going to be eight. If it's false, the pricing is going to be 12. And for anyone that's familiar with the website, we actually have membership pricing on our site. And depending upon whether or not you're logged into the site as a member, to determines what prices appear under some of our tutorials. So then I'm just going to write this to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes, refresh my browser window, and you'll notice now it says your pricing is $8. And again, it's because I have the is a member set to true. If I were to change this to false, save that change because now it actually should go to 12. Great time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. I'm going to make sure all my save or all my changes are saved. I'm going to refresh the browser window and you'll notice now it says 12. So again, a lot of things going on here with conditional statements inside JavaScript. We covered the big, the important aspects of conditional statements. The next thing we're going to look at is switch statements in JavaScript because they're like conditional statements. They can have branching, but you can do a lot more stuff with a, or with a switch statement than conditional statements. And actually, I shouldn't say that that's not true. You can do the same thing with the if statement or the if else statement, else if statement inside JavaScript. But the switch statement makes it a lot easier to read, a lot, easy, a lot easier to keep track of multiple code flow, multiple code options based on the selection of the variables. So I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it.